In tonight's News Extra, a very personal side of living with AIDS. Contributing editor Ray Lewis Thornton shows us a side of her life the cameras haven't seen. How her illness is ravaging her body, but not her spirit. I look good. Don't look like I'm HIV. Don't look like I have AIDS. Okay. This is the side of me that you've seen up to now. The side my friends see and the people I meet. When you look at me, you don't think you see AIDS. But it is there. And the girls that go natural, good for them, but I can't do that. I need the hot ass. A diva never leaves the house without earrings. Uh, never leaves the house without lipstick. The shoes that you start with are the shoes that you end with unless you change your outfit. So don't put on no four inch heels and go out and before you get home you have on flip flops. Mm -mm. If you could handle them bitches when you walked out of this house, you ought to be able to walk back in your house with them bitches on, okay? When you go to the grocery store, when you walk the dogs, when you go to speak, you're always on the diva game. Voila, perfect. Thank you. I take Persista, Icentris, uh, Ritonavir, Mtreva. Uh, those are my four HIV cocktails. And then I take Acyclovir for herpes, Zoloft uh, for depression. And that's about 15 pills a day. I had unprotected sex uh, with a partner that I was seeing monogamously and he infected me with HIV. It was very early in the AIDS epidemic, so he, safe to say, didn't know that he was infected with HIV when he infected me. I organized the blood drive at my job, baked cookies, the Red Cross came out. Uh, they had just started testing uh, all donated blood for HIV, and that was like the winter of 1986 and the spring of 87. I received a letter from the Red Cross telling me that something was wrong with the blood I donated. Jesus. You gotta see my new, you gotta see all this tea up in here. Okay, I'll show you, I'll give you a bite that I did like. What is that? Here we go. Mm, it's it's That's like, good. It's like cloves and... Ray is definitely a diva. And, and, and just yeah. as much as she puts me in my place, I have to put her in her place sometimes as well. That's what best friends do. So as a diva, she does have her diva rules and she does what divas do. Got lost in the camera. Mm -hmm. That's okay. We're gonna use the same tea bag. Oh, I didn't steep my tea. So it's been like... It's been like a minute. Okay. I just feel like I'm about to like go get a massage. Like I'm in the waiting room for my massage. <laughs> and what are you drinking? I'm not a mean spirited diva. I just like to be fabulous. People expect me to be in public looking great because it's like, yes, she's doing it. She's showing people that you can look great with AIDS and you can be fabulous with AIDS and, you know, but, but I'm like this in all areas of my life. I mean, I use cloth napkins. I, I mean, I don't really eat out of paper plates. I mean, if I got to, I will. 
but it's not my preference. The first time Ray and I met, we were in a political theories class together, and the class allowed for a lot of discussion and argument, and she and I had come from very different backgrounds and beliefs. We honestly butt heads <laughs> when we first met, and we're not friends. <laughs> Um, the next semester we had another class together and we had like a meeting of the minds and just from then on just became the best of friends. Sophie, come here. Come here. Why are you stressing? Get over here. Come here. It's hard to get support systems because people don't see illness here. But I am in an enormous amount of pain today. And that's it. She doesn't have days where she wakes up and she feels great. You know, sometimes we wake up and we think, oh, it feels so good, the sun's shining, I feel great, and she doesn't really have those. So she really pushes through each day with the pain that she carries. To be attractive, to see yourself on covers of magazine, I mean, that beautiful. It's like kind of surreal when you wake up one morning and you no longer see the outer beauty. I've had to mourn this piece of loss of my beauty, something that AIDS really concretely took away from me. I had no fucking control over, none. I can fight the fatigue every morning because I could crawl my ass out of bed. I can't do shit about the redistribution of fat in my body, my che cheeks being sunk in, losing the fat in here and gaining the fat here. I, I can't do shit about that. I went to the telephone and I called my doctor, Marge Cohen who's my physician for 19 years. And I said, Marge, I quit. I quit. I said, the quality of my life is more important than how long I live. I can't do this anymore. And she said to me, no, no, you got to give me more time. You've got to give me more time. And I could hear in her voice that day, God, that if you stop taking this medicine, you will surely die. And she was fighting for me. I said, um, mm, that you fought for me when I couldn't fight for myself anymore. <sighs> I love that lady. She looks high because my age. Okay, just step up then. Stop. You know, I used to go to the high schools. I used to be all dramatic when I first started speaking, and I'd tell the freshmen to stand, and I'd say, by the time you graduate, I'm gonna be dead. And those kids hit me up on Facebook, and they say, Miss Thornton, you said by the time I graduate from high school, you's gonna be dead. I'm 30 years old, and you ain't dead yet. And all I can say is thanks be to God. Let me tell you something about Ray's advocacy on social networking. Ray 
kicked and screamed about joining MySpace. Then Facebook came along, and I was on Facebook for a while, and I told her, I said, Ray, got to join Facebook. And she reluctantly joined Facebook because she felt like I already have MySpace, loved it. I then Twitter came, <laughs> and I said, Ray, I know I got you to do uh, Facebook, but you've got to get on Twitter. When she finally started to be active on Twitter, now Twitter is like everything for her. Uh, when I had a young man say to me, reading your tweets and your blog prevented me from committing suicide, it's like, wow. She wants to be on the cutting edge and she wants to continue on with her work no matter what direction it takes. I'm not the only woman like me with AIDS. I may be the only woman like me with AIDS who's willing to talk about it publicly. My speech all crumbled up and rewritten over. I'm so not to receive this thing. Never in my wildest imagination would I believe that I would that I would believe that I would receive such an honor. I grew up in a house where I was told, and I quote, "You ain't never gonna be shit." My mother wrote me out of history, but today my life and work has been sealed permanently in the history of my wonderful alma mater, Northeastern Illinois University. Thank you. Thank you for seeing the worth in me that my mama could never see. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing my life and work in HIV. But at my baseline, I understand that you cannot sugarcoat shit. You cannot save lives sugarcoating shit. I was raised in a house in an environment where I was violated and unprotected. Books became my refuge. Like many of you, I believed that education was my way out of my circumstance. I believed that education was my stepping stone out of my mama's house. But without the proper support, education was a rough road for me. By the time I was in seventh grade, I only had a fifth grade reading level. But how could I excel when my big brother raped me every single day at lunch and then sent me back to school with blood and semen inside of my nine-year-old vagina? Education was a rough road for me. When I graduated from high school, I could only reach a score of 12 on my ACTs. But how could I truly learn with mama beating me out of the bed in the morning at 5 a.m. to find her hairbrush and I would still had to turn around and get to class by 8 o'clock. Education was a rough road for me. But like many of you, no matter how hard it got, I was not going to surrender. Failure was not an option this time. My childhood had robbed me of a proper foundation for education. But now, older, wiser, and more determined, I was not going to allow HIV to rob me. She's been through a lot. So for her to come this far and to accomplish what she's accomplished is really amazing. I mean, at that time, I had only told six people that I was infected, and Audrey made six. I was living in shame and denial and secret. I was afraid that no one would hire me and no one would love me. But Audrey's compassion was much larger than her fears. I'm proud of her. You 
know, every day she's got, she may be, you know, as sick as a dog, you know, just feeling horrible. If she has a commitment, she gets up there and she fulfills it. And that is extraordinary. It really is. She's just, she's amazing like that. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. It takes every fucking thing I got to stand up and face this bitch called AIDS every single day and do it with grace and dignity and lipstick and earrings. It's fucking hard. It's hard work. It's hard work. And um, I'm tough. I'm gonna tell you something. I am going to die. You live and you die. And people will say, she gave AIDS a run for his fucking money. Yeah. Yeah. Go forth, graduates. Never stop. Even if it gets hard, never stop. Even if the road gets rough, even if you can't seem like seeing your, that you can find your way, just find a new route. Go forth, graduates, go forth. Thank you.